Hello on this cold wintry day. I hope you're all staying warm and cozy. I want to tell you how much I enjoy making these videos. They're a lot of fun for me to do and I appreciate you watching them. There's a lot of reasons why I do these videos. The first reason is because I hope that someday my posterity will be able to look at these and get a sense of my personality, of how my, maybe my, my um, mannerisms, uh, maybe I'll have a great great grandchild or great 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 grandchild that has my same traits and that will be fun for them to look back and see these videos. And I also really hope that they will be able to see, um, well I hope I'm able to express my values to them and it also serves as kind of a modern day diary for me. I was approached about a year and a half ago by somebody in the YouTube business that wanted to help me promote my channel. And he told me that if I wanted to really grow my channel, I should focus in on my cooking videos. And he really was convinced that my channel would do really well if I would just focus on one thing. But I didn't want to focus on one thing. I love making videos to cook. I love cooking videos, but I also love family videos and I like um, traveling videos. Chad and I just have such a good time going traveling and we like to record that. And so I just I just told him, no, I'm going to stay with what I'm doing. And But I'm curious to know what videos do you like to watch that I produce. The second reason why I enjoy making videos is because they have turned out to be a really nice source of extra income for us. It didn't start out that way. We've been doing them for almost five years and it is because of you and your subscribing that we have almost 200,000 subscribers. I can't believe that. I, I remember when I was a kid in grade school, I really wanted a pen pal, but I didn't know how to go about getting a pen pal. And now I feel like I have pen pals. Well, I do. I have pen pals all around the world and I really enjoy our conversations and I feel like I have gotten close with many of you over the years and I just want to tell you thank you. And I know that sometimes I don't answer all the comments. I try to get to them the first couple of days that the video goes out, but I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for that. Okay, there's always one or two crazies, but I just try to ignore them. Today's video has got to be one of my funnest videos yet because it takes me back to my childhood and I'm going to talk to you about that in just a minute. These boxes are some dolls that were sent to me from Ysteria and that you can see that they are packaged very nicely so that the boxes arrive without getting dented. I like that these dolls come with the accessories. Isn't that cute? The first thing I notice about these dolls is their weight. They have some weight to them. Okay, the hair is a little crazy, but they have been in a box with a net over them. It's soft. And if your kids are anything like my kids, this is something that you're going to like about these dolls too. This is not a hard vinyl. That is silicone and it is so soft. Look. Around the legs, the little creases. They've put a lot of detail into these dolls. And the accessories feel like nice fabric. Look how the little pacifier has a magnet to it. Now look at her hair. These dolls are meant to be played with and they're priced that way. I went on their website, they are between $50 and $100 and some of the dolls are even as low as $30 is what I saw on the website. That is not bad for a little doll like this. Eusteria is giving away a free doll to one of my viewers 
and all you've got to do is leave a comment in the comment section below and within 48 hours of the time I post this video, they will select the winner of a new doll. Did you get a new doll for Christmas when you were a child? Every year, I did. I got a new doll every year. And one year I asked for a Mrs. Beasley doll. And Mrs. Beasley, I, I'm sure every child in the United States wanted a Mrs. Beasley doll. But I think that Santa Claus and his elves were having a really hard time keeping up with the demands that year because I didn't get a Mrs. Beasley doll. I got a homemade doll with yarn hair and an embroidered base. And I loved her. But I also pretended that she was a Mrs. Beasley doll. That year I also got a little pink cradle. And that's what she came in, a little homemade blanket and a homemade um, pink rocking cradle. And I've given most of my dolls away to the girls. I think I've told Julie that she could have this one. So this is Julie's doll when she wants to take her home with her. So do you ever remember getting the Sears and Roebuck catalog? Man, that catalog kept me entertained from October through December, and I would turn the pages down, and I would circle everything that I wanted Santa Claus to bring me, and then when I changed my mind, I'd, I'd put a big, I'd letter them one through however many to let Santa Claus know what order that I wanted my gifts. And the funny thing is, is I swear the best gifts that I got at Christmas time are the ones I didn't even ask for. I think Santa Claus had a much better imagination than I did. So over the years, I've been lucky to, be, to have been able to hold on to a few treasured toys. And this little um, horse, I probably got when I was a year and a half old. And my dad told me I rode the hell out of it. And you can see, I, I rode the wheels right off. It had little casters on it. But I was thinking that someday it might be kind of fun to repaint this horse and put it up on a shelf, even if it's the shelf in the top of a closet. But this, for some reason over the years, this is one of those things that I haven't been able to part with. I just, I just loved horses as a kid. We, we grew up on horses, and so this was my horse when I was little. Do any of you remember these Fisher-Price trucks? And I, I think they make them now, but they're, they're different than this. This is a good old wooden truck, and it had the milk cartons in it, and I'm sure mine got soury, and my mom probably finally threw them away. But, um, but I would take this out in the dirt, and you can see that is dirt from my dad's field. And I played so hard with these trucks. I was really actually a tomboy, but I always liked dolls. I always, and, that, and I haven't changed. I'm still kind of a tomboy, and I like babies. This I got on the last Christmas that I was at home. I think it was the last. And I took him to college with me, and he's even starred in one of my videos. I'll link that below. But, and this tie, is it was my dad's. And when they were giving out his things, I just took that tie and wrapped it around Bear. And I don't think I'll ever part with Bear unless one of my children wants him. But So this little stove, let me show you this little stove. This little stove got played with a lot. It's a little cast iron stove. Let's see if I can get it open. And I've tried really hard over the years to hold on to all the pieces. And I think this stove represents me 
because I'm a little bit old fashioned, deep down, I'm really old fashioned. Wow, it was getting hot sitting by the fireplace, so I had to turn it off. Um, I want to tell you one more story. I was probably maybe three or four, and my brothers came into my bedroom Christmas morning. My brothers and sisters came into my bedroom, but I really remember my oldest brother, because I don't have very many memories of him when I was living at home, because he was so much older than I was. But they came into my bedroom, and they were so excited because Santa Claus was in the front room that very minute. And they just, Jennifer, get up, hurry, hurry. Santa Claus is here. We don't want to miss him. Hurry, if you hurry fast enough, you'll, you'll see him. And I had, I had a wet diaper, cloth diaper, and I was so uncomfortable. I remember that. But I did it anyway. I ran into the front room anyway. And by the time I got into the front room, he was gone. He was gone already. I just missed him by that much. My brothers and sisters are like, Jennifer, you just barely missed him. And I'm like, oh, if I'd have hurried faster. But anyway, Santa Claus left me an easy bake oven. And this wasn't the kind of easy bake oven that sits on the counter, you know, those little things they have now. This was an easy bake oven that stood on the floor and it had a stove top and it, and it had a door that, uh, oven door that came down. And it was probably one of the first easy bake ovens out there, I bet. This was in like 1964, 1963, something in there. And um, that, was, that was a pretty fun Christmas for me. I will not forget that one. Um, there's so many others, but I think I've rambled on long enough for now, and I sure appreciate you watching this video. And if you're one of my grandchildren years from now, you just remember that Grandma loves you, and Grandma knows that there's a Santa Claus. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.